Just a quick question. How many of you here, how many people are here so far? Just. <laughs> I hope the rest of you get here soon. So. <laughs> well, it's the first time we played in front of a printing press. And uh, <clears throat> during sound check, uh, you know, Melissa asked us if we could just turn up a little bit. And I said, that's another first. Usually it's like, turn down. <laughs> I am here today is I'm kind of spreading the word. I am starting a online music academy. For the past few years while I've been uh, taking a little, while mu live music has been on a little bit of a timeout, I've been teaching elementary school in some of the little schools out in the hills. <laughs> And um, just learning a lot about music education in Montana. And right now, currently in the state, we have like 50 schools, I think, that don't have a music teacher. And I just think that um, for Montanans to have the best possible chance at having a successful future, I, I really feel that music education is a part of that and a part of a really well-rounded education. So um, it's gonna be called Starlight Academy. And to raise money for this, I am producing this year Montana's Got Talent at the Wachholz. And it's going to be a collection of many, many talents of all ages. I'm really hoping that somebody comes in with a mouth harp, right? 
<laughs> and so I'm just here to kind of spread the word. If you know somebody that's really talented, that has a beautiful voice, that always wanted their chance to be on the big stage, this is their chance. And there's so many incredible prizes. I'm producing a demo for them. I'm setting them up with a chance to open for a national touring act. There's a cash prize. It's just going to be so much fun. And so, yeah, spread the word. And actually, this song that Pops is going to sing for us is part of a Native American reading series that we developed together with permission from the tribes. That is, their oral traditions that have been passed down for centuries, and we turn them into children's songs, and we take them across Montana and uh, teach a little bit of our heritage to children in that way. And it's so cool because the children learn the songs and then we all do a show together and it's just such a it's been such a rewarding experience to do this uh series with them well you know i i grew up in Cutbank, montana and so of course uh, the the tribes of, of the oral traditions that we worked on were the crow tribes the uh, salish kootenai and also the blackfeet and i told halliday i said you know I want to, uh, to write the, the Blackfeet songs because I grew up right across the river from the Blackfeet Reservation. And I, I have many uh, of my closest friends were Blackfeet kids and I played basketball with and against and, and music as well too. This is the creation story for the Blackfeet which took place in the Badger Two Medicine area which is just south of Glacier National Park. And um, of course the, their, uh, <clears throat> their first man was Old Man Noppy. The great maker sent Old Man Noppy down to create the world, and that's the subject of the song. father the sun, his mother the moon, he began in the south, and not too soon he was making the prairies, making the mountains, making the forests, making the world. He did all this and he journeyed forth, he brought water from the springs as he traveled north. The lakes and the waterfalls, rocks and rills, the grass on the sweet grass hills. Old oh, man Nobby, all the birds, rivers and trees. Old man Nobby, for the bears he made the honey bees, take another look around, and every living thing that can be found, the great maker gave it all to you and me, with old man Nobby, when he saw all the animals running wild, decided to create a woman and a child, told him what to do, and they had no meat, they were fish in the water, everyone could eat, they learned about fire, they learned how to live on the roots and the berries that the earth grew through. Learn how to grow and have a good life with a bow, an arrow, and a knife. Oh, oh man, I'll be more buffalo than you can see. Oh, oh man, I'll be a horse gentle as he can be. Take another look around at every living thing that can be found. The great maker gave it all to you. If your will is strong, your heart is true. Spirit power is going to come to you. And one day man will come from the east, changing your world, disturbing the peace. You may not want to live the way they do. Stay strong, happy, and true. Oh, oh man, not be. More people of the world you'll see. Oh, oh man, not be. Try to live in harmony. Take another look around. Everything that can be found, the great maker gave it all to you and me, with old man Nappy. He gave it all to you and me, it's yours and it's wild and free. How much better could this all be because of old man Nappy? Thank you. This next song is a song that I wrote about hanging out on Flathead Lake. One activity I'm very excited to do again this summer. 
<laughs> There's actually a video of this online with the Montana acoustic sessions. And uh, so it was kind of a smoky day, but we were right on Flathead Lake. And so we were trying to get the boats that were hanging out, trying to watch the video to get out of the way. And um, so the, the motor boats left, but there were two kayakers that just kept waiting and waiting. And then once we started shooting, they, of course, paddled right through the backdrop. They got into the video, so. <laughs>
And uh, so I said, well, show him on back to my dressing room. So this guy walked in and introduced himself. He was with the uh, foot cone and belding um, ad insurance company or ad advertising agency. And he wanted to know if I would be interested in writing um, a jingle for Levi's 501 jeans. And I said, well, geez, I'm kind of a Wrangler guy, you know. And he said, well, let me tell you who else is involved. We have Jerry Garcia, Tony Braxton, the Gin Blossoms, you know, all these great groups. I thought, you're kidding. And then he told me how much he was going to pay me. <laughs> so I got really interested. And so, uh, so, of course, you know, the family will tell you that I, I'm the one that, uh, they call me the Punisher because of my penchant for, for making puns on anything anybody says. And uh, so I, I got to go a little crazy on this one. I called this the Blue Jean Love Affair. When I'm down and feeling blue, all I gotta do is think about you, the way you walked into my dreams. Don't wanna live without you, it's just the way I feel about you. Our love is like my five on one jeans. It won't come apart at the seams, won't be fading in time. You know I'll never leave you hanging on the line. Well, it's a blue jean love affair, me and you the perfect pair. Our love is like my 501 jeans. Mmm, up way high, 501 jeans. Blow the belt off the cuff Sometimes gentle, sometimes tough The way you are may seem to look brand new Don't want to fool with all the rest Overstated and underdressed And they can never get a leg up on you Cute as a button And you're always on the fly The way you are forgiven When I don't measure up the size the way you feel against my skin You got me thinking about moving in Our love is like my 501 jeans That's Poppy the Punisher. How many people had a chance to read the article that the Interlake did about us? Yeah, you should check that out. It's really, uh, it's really a great, uh, nicely written article by Taylor Inman and uh, talks a lot about uh, our program that uh, Halliday was talking about. And, and so it's a good read. Well, you may not think this by looking at me now, but my first band was actually a metal band. And I graduated high school, and uh, I was playing electric bass in my brother's band and hitting the road and sleeping under vehicles at festivals. And <laughs> it was a wild time. Um, that band lasted about 10 years, and then I kind of decided I wanted to come back to Montana and 
you know, I was kind of spoiled growing up here because with such beautiful water and fresh air, it's just like you can't really live anywhere else because you have these high expectations of living, right? <laughs> so I came back to Montana. I uh, found this little trailer in Polson, Montana, and I was bartending at the lake bar and just trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life. And um, I think it was... They call it the, the Bear Spleen Report. Have you guys ever heard this? It's something that they do on the reservation to see how many big winter storms they're going to have that year. And it's something about a, a hunting party that it's very ceremonial, and then they check the, the bear spleen, and, and that will tell them. And I think we were, we were looking to have 11 major storms that, that winter, and I was sitting in number seven. And <laughs> my pipes were frozen, like everything was just like, I had like five or six sweaters on, I was just kind of shivering on the couch, and I'm just kind of like, what in the heck am I doing with my life, and why am I here in Polson, Montana? There's not a lot of work for musicians in Polson this time of year, like I gotta figure this out. And uh, all of a sudden, out of the sky, it was kind of, I walked outside and these just huge, gorgeous snowflakes start falling out of the sky and I'm kind of catching them in my hand and each of them is so unique and so different in its own, you know, vibration and I just kind of remember kind of like opening myself up to the sky and like letting the little snowflakes kind of kiss my face and I went back inside and I sat down and wrote this song and this actually ended up on my album, my first solo album that I recorded in Nashville. This one's called What's Coming Down. Some years ago, um, I was approached by Mike Grenett with the Montana Fish and Game Department. And um, he wanted to, uh, he was gathering uh, some of the uh, well-known cowboy poets 
throughout the state to write um, poems about Montana. And he said, Rob, I want you to write one about how Montana is changing. And I thought, now, how do I say this without uh, stepping on some toes here and upsetting a lot of people? So uh, <clears throat> this is the tack that I chose. This is entitled, She's Been Called a Lady. I just want to say that uh, Montana is special because almost a third of our state is public lands. And what that means is it's not owned by the federal government, it's owned by each and every one of you. So when people say, how are things in Montana? You can say truthfully, well, I own millions of acres up here. Montana. She's been called a lady when we sing her praise. And if you fail to see the logic, well then, let me count the ways. Her cirrus hair is red and gold at evening sunset's light. And I've always thought her mountains looked especially good in white. Her gown is luscious green when she attends the annual springtime ball. And she fancies orange and gold at harvest moon in the fall. Her wild and natural beauty, it will take away your breath. Oh, but just take her for granted. It could easily mean your death. She's slow to grant her favors to come lately newer faces. To longtime suitors, she reveals her hidden secret places. She lives in big time splendor. She's the heart of the Golden West. And we that live within her care are infinitely blessed. And yes, there will be those who come with schemes of ways to use her, to sell her body like a harlot, to cheapen and abuse her. If you've sworn your love for her, revere, respect her. If you're a man of honor, you must cherish and protect her. And should we fail in this task, we'll lose this living treasure. Should we prevail, this lady that we love will live forever. She's a lady. a show together that's called A Love Letter to Montana, and it encapsulates a lot of Dad's beautiful, beautiful poetry that he's written over the many years that he's toured the state. That's going to be at the Walk Holtz in September, I think September 22nd, 21st. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. we got a couple more for you. This is the first song I ever wrote on stand-up bass. This one's called Real Wind.
songs is pretty interesting. It's like sometimes it takes just weeks and weeks and hours and hours of reworking the line and reworking the melody and and then sometimes it's kind of like tuning into a radio station and um, the whole song is written in like five or six minutes and you're just like, whoa, where did that come from? <laughs> this next song was kind of the latter experience. I was on my first bus tour across Montana and um, it was a gorgeous night. I think we were over kind of by the Lewis and Clark Caverns, that gorgeous road that drives by the river there. And it was a full moon, and Dad was driving. And we like to hang out when Dad's driving because we just like talk and sing and goof off and stuff. And all of a sudden, I kind of get this feeling that this new song might be coming through. And, I don't know the feeling. It's kind of like an itch in the middle of your back, I guess. You've got to be like, ah, got to get it. Oh. OK. <laughs> so then um, I went to the back of the bus, and I kind of put the ear of my, or put the hole of my guitar right next to my ear so I could hear it over the engine. And I wrote this song. This one's called Let It Burn.
much. My name is Halliday Quist. This is my father, Rob Quist. Halliday Please. Quist, actually Halliday Blake. <laughs> Please go to montanasgottalent.com and tell all your friends to sign up. Much Thank love you. to you all. Cheers. Thanks so much for coming.